What? No. <laughs> in this week's episode of YouTube Art School, I'll show you in detail how Japanese artists color their drawing or how they color anime using a technique called cell shading. How to go from this to that, including all the technical detail. Man, it's actually pretty simple, so let's get this press started. Alright, class is in session. Pay attention. So we're going to start by checking out the main differences between regular shading and cell shading. But first, I'm collecting mandatory donations of either one like or one sub as payments for the video and all the work that went into it. If you don't pay, your art will be cursed. <laughs> Good. So to begin, let's just take a look at this here. To understand the cell shading style, we have to realize that it's just like normal shading. But instead of having a smooth gradient between the shadows and the highlights, we'll be dealing with flat colors. Most of the time, a high quality anime will have a base color, a highlight color, and a shadow color. Often a fourth color will often be used for specular highlights like this, or for rim lights too. There are a few more finishing steps after that, but we'll get to that later. But first, let's get started with a clean line art and put this into practice as I go through the entire coloring process for this new drawing that I have. The same process used overwhelmingly by Japanese artists. You'll just need Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint or any other painting software that has clipping masks. That's it. In total, at its simplest, it's going to be a five-step process. So equip your smudge guard, whip out your pen, and let's get right into it. So with our line art in hand, because cell shading relies on the lines as the foundation for the coloring style, it's a bit less forgiving in that sense. The drawing has to be solid from the start because it'll be really annoying to make changes to it later, as opposed to, let's say, a more painterly approach. So anyways, the first step will be to slap on the base colors. And I'll be using a different layer for each of the main colors. I want all the colors to be isolated on their own individual layers for the clipping masks to work in the next step. We'll see how that works in just a sec, but I just wanted to mention the base colors can be relatively light. For a light skin as an example, the base color will tend to stay within the brightest 20% of colors in this range here. Other materials might not be as light, of course, and obviously you'll want overall darker colors if you're going for a darker mood. It's just a ballpark, but you should remember the 20% number since we'll use it to figure out the shadow colors in the next step. So let's just do that. I used the skin as an example in a previous step, so let's start with that to add the shadows. This is where we'll start using clipping masks. So right above my skin base layer here, I'll create a new layer and immediately I'll change that layer into a clipping mask by clicking here in Photoshop. Boom. And in Clip Studio Paint, for those that use that, it's similar, but the option is found here instead. Clip to layer below and you'll be able to tell that it's a clipping mask by the red bar that appears here. Now back to Photoshop. Clipping masks are nice because they limit the area that you can paint on based on the first normal layer directly underneath. So for my skin here, you can see the paint is only applied to where I painted the base skin color. That's what clipping masks are for. And that's why I painted each base color on their individual layers. Makes more sense now. And that's about as technical as this is going to get. So with shadows, usually you'll get good results if the shadow is around like 20 to 30% darker than the base color. But of course, it's not an exact science. It's just a good starting point that you can actually calculate with the color picker tool. If I color pick my base color, I just have to drag the brightness down here by about 20-ish percent. And that should look pretty decent. What looks a little better though is to drag the hue slider towards red a little bit at the same time. We're essentially warming up the shadow color that way, but just slightly. And I'll do the same for every color, creating a new layer on top of it, converting it to a clipping mask and painting in the shadows. And as a side note, you can use the same technique for a more painterly style too, you know, the only difference really would be that you blend the sharp transitions between the base color and the shadows with a smudge brush or similar tool. That can look great too, but we're focusing on cell shading now. So let's call the shadow pass done and move on to the next step, highlights. But just a quick announcement before I do, I'm running a massive sale until the end of the month only for my art program to celebrate reaching 21,000 students. It's a university equivalent curriculum that you can do from home at your own pace, along with an awesome Discord community of artists just like you. Check the link in the video description to join or learn more. And if you're already a student, thank you. You're what keeps this channel going since, as you know, I don't take any sponsors. I love you. Highlights are next. And here we'll be repeating what we did for the shadows once more, creating clipping masks on top of each of the base colors. Now, the main difference this time will be the color choice. 
starting from the base color we have, we'll have to decide what kind of lighting we want for the scene. Often, I'll just consider the sun as the light source, so for any color I pick, I'll select its highlight color by moving the slider towards the color yellow on the chromatic circle in a direction where it's closest. And then brighten that color again by 20 to 30% or more, just depending on how intense you want the light source to be. The sun tends to be pretty intense, so even my darkest color, like Goku's hair, will have relatively light highlights, well over 30% lighter in this case. But like I said, 20 to 30% is a good starting point. Now, how to decide where to place the highlights is a whole different topic though. And I have a class specifically on lighting, so I recommend you check it out if you're struggling with this. I'll put a link to it down in the video description so you can check it out after this class. And before we move on to the next step, as a bonus, if you have Photoshop, you can also add an outer glow layer style to get a nicer transition between mid and light color. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. Anyways, now let's move on to the finishing touches. But as a side note, before I move on to the next step, maybe you're wondering why I haven't said anything about the layer blend modes. And it's simply because all I'm using are normal blend modes, just no multiply or overlay for this workflow, just keeping it easy. All right, two more quick steps and then we'll be done. This time we're gonna whip out the soft brush because we'll be adding color gradients to spice up all of these boring flat colors. What's exciting in art? is contrast, and flat colors are by definition boring. The solution is just this. With a slightly different color, usually a darker or lighter version, we can break up that flat surface and make it a lot more interesting to look at. Not everything needs a gradient, though, you know, I'd focus on large areas since those need it the most, and you can see it being used here, for example. It's not obvious, but if I use the color picker, you can clearly see the color changing. Here as well, maybe more obvious in this case, and it just looks way nicer. Before, after, don't you think? Hell yeah. Finally, this brings us to the last mini step, coloring the line art. And if I pull this up again, we can see the lines don't stay black everywhere. Often the artist will tint the line art based on the base color. If it's a darker color, you just leave it black. But if it's a lighter color though, like Bulma's hair, for example, I can simply adjust the line color to be a little bit more similar instead of pure black. Like this works pretty well. And we can also do this when the line is on the side where the light is coming from, like this here. And so to do this, to color your lines, all you gotta do is lock the alpha on the line art layer so that you're only able to paint on the lines. Or if you really like clipping masks, you could use one here instead too, I guess. But yeah, like I said, this is super quick and it adds a nice layer of polish to the drawing, right? Very nice. And that's going to be it for this week's class. Now go out there and color some stuff. Do it. I hope that was helpful. You know what to do if it was. You know, tell your friends, tell your dog, yell it to your neighbors. They should all subscribe and learn art with us. Also, since you've been a good student, you get freebies. My main brush pack is available for download with the link in the video description. And it's free and it contains the brush that I use for my line art and uh, well, much of the coloring that I did today here. So there you'll also find a link to some exercise files with a bunch of drawings that you can practice coloring with if that helps. And also don't forget, I have a huge discount on my art program until the end of the month only. So 